Well, this has been a crazy year for the alcohol industry, especially the light beer space, where the previous kingpin, Bud Light, made some marketing missteps that opened the door for its competitors. One of its biggest winners has been Molson Coors. But unbeknownst to so many, this one's been winning for several years now because of very savvy CEO, Gavin Hattersley, who just had a terrific analyst day, laying out what's been accomplished and what can be accomplished still. We are fortunate enough to have Mr. Hattersley with us to talk about the strategy and what he sees happening in Molson Coors and the industry in general. Gavin, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks very much for having me, Jim. It's great to be back. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Now, Gavin, I think that there was a sense by people that, wow, you've really taken advantage of a current fracas in the beer market. But the fact is, you have been growing numbers since for several years now. This strategy meeting, I think, pointed the way. What is fueling the turn that did not start this spring, but has been going on for several years? You're 100% right, Jim. I mean, we started our revitalization plan about three and a half years ago, and we've laid the building blocks to um, make our organization ready to grow. We're built for growth. We actually are growing, as you rightly call out, and uh, we've laid out our plans to grow into the future for two, three, four years' time. And, you know, last time you had me on the show, Jim, you, you predicted that, and you were right. Well, look, I had to. I like premiumization. You were back in that. And I also know, because you have a finance background, you decided to get that balance sheet right. Those are the two things I love to see. Talk about them, because you accomplished them in a very short period of time. We did. I mean, four years ago when this team came together, I think our leverage ratio was was close to five times, yes. and, and we got it down to uh, just below two and a half times at the end of June. And we've We've laid out our algorithm to keep it below two and a half times. But at the same time, Jim, we announced a, a $2 billion share rebuyback, a buyback program, which will go into place immediately. Well, I, I think people should know it's your company is like $13 billion. I mean, that's an actual if You're buying a ton of stock back from what's publicly traded. Yes, yes, we are. We're going to do that over five years, Jim. Well, I think it's fantastic. Now, I do have to ask you, there are, I read a Gallup poll. Uh, younger people apparently aren't drinking as much as they used to. Uh, do you see that? And also these GLP-1 drugs apparently making it so people don't want to drink as much. Have, they, have you seen any impact from uh, the change in habit or the change in medicine? Jim, you know, from a GLP-1 point of view, no, we haven't seen anything. And I think there's a lot out there that's still unknown, right? I mean, it's not an, it's, it's an expensive thing to get to a path to go down, right? It's more than a thousand bucks a month. Um, but what it does do is it does play into this whole health and wellness um, um, drive that, that increasingly consumers are moving along, particularly 21 to 27 year olds. And that plays right into our overall strategy, where we're moving beyond beer, we're moving into non-alc products, whether those are energy drinks, whether they're non-alcoholic beers. In fact, one of our bigger innovations, which I think is going to be a big deal for us, is the launch of, of Blue Moon Non-Alc, which we're bringing um, in uh, December, just in time for, for dry January. And I think that's going to play right into that place, uh, so, into that uh, space. I, Gavin, I'm so glad you brought that up, because hey, I, you and I both know, because I have some background in the liquor business, I am shocked at how, after many years of people not liking these non alcoholic beers, which I have to say, I always thought it tasted awful, they now taste good. And I think that you were the one who told me this could happen. I always said there's no way those beers would taste good. But you have seen it, and people like them. They do, Jim, and you're absolutely right. If, if, if it tastes good, the consumers are going to drink them. And I think our brewers have done an amazing job getting, you know, Blue Moon non out to taste very, very similar to uh, Blue Moon Belgian white. And I, we, we uh, sampled it at the um, Investor Day yesterday, and they loved it. So... I'm looking forward to getting that in the market in December. You and me both. All right, so the so-called browns and the clears, the vodkas, the gins, you, you've been in some of the browns. Are they tapering off? I know beer's still growing, but are, are the actual hard spirits not growing that much? No, they're growing as well, uh, Jim. They're, they're still increasing share of, of the alcohol space, and, and certainly our acquisition of Blue Run Spirits Company is uh, playing right into that into that trend, and and it's an above premium product, really high margins. It's a great product. It's got a great uh, team that's working behind uh, that uh, that acquisition, and we're very excited about it. Okay, how about at the store level? I know a lot of people drink at a, a bar, but how are you taking? Are you taking shelf space in the last say year or two from other beers? We're taking a ton of shelf space, Jim. That was one of the big points we landed yesterday. You know, these trend changes that we're seeing and have seen now for six months, I know there have been a lot of question marks around whether that's going to stick. Well, I can tell you it is sticking. Uh, we've now got six months of, of, of data to show that those trends are not changing. 
We're gaining a ton of uh, shelf space in the four resets, which is very unusual. That doesn't normally happen. And we're expecting to take a lot more in spring. So not only are we getting thousands and thousands of new tap handles, we're getting tens of thousands of extra square footage of retail. And, and, and that is what um, is, is one of the big underpinners for us as we head into next year to drive uh, the continued momentum. I've always felt that when you take shelf space, it may be glacial when you take it, but it's incredibly sticky once you've got it. It is highly unlikely it'll be rolled back and more likely that you'll be gaining more space, wouldn't you say, sir? I completely agree with you, Jim. Once you've got it and uh, your brands are as healthy as our brands are, like Miller Lite and Coors Light, uh, it sticks. All right, you've been doing some personalization. I've got, I happen to be a Flyers fan. I've got in my, in my, uh, in my refrigerator all these Flyers buds, uh, Labats that you, you seem to be making good stuff where the labels matter, I think. Do, is that do. just you and me? We do. Tell me about it. Tell me what people like to drink. No, I think the consumer loves it, uh, Jim. They love seeing uh, um, their, their favorite football team or their favorite ice hockey team or baseball team showing up on the, on the on the packaging, the secondary packaging of their beers, and we do that extensively with with Miller Lite in particular, and we're also introducing it to Coors Light uh, next year. Now, I, I've been remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that you're really an international brand. I'm focused on America, but if I were to go over to Europe, would I not see your brand be the number one in almost every country? Yes, you would. Number one and number two, um, Jim. So if you were in Croatia, you'd be drinking Ojusko. That's our brand. If you were in the United Kingdom, you'd be drinking Carling, you'd be drinking Coors, you could find Blue Moon. And you would also find our, the, probably the best innovation we've ever had in Europe, which is Madrid. We launched that brand three years ago, and it is all, already one of our largest brands in our portfolio. It's a, it's a machine. Don't these travel? I mean, I would like to see some of these. I mean, I, look, you and I talked about how much we like European drinks. I mean, I used to drink, my father used to drink Carling. There's great beers, bring them back. <laughs> Well, we've got Peroni here right for you now, Jim. That's a great European mm, beer. It's delicious. But, uh, yes, Madrid is a winner, and I'm sure you'll see it um, at some point in time in the future. All right, you and I'll knock back one. That's Gavin Harris, the presidency of Molson Coors Beverage. He's done a remarkable turn, not in six months, but in multiple years. Thank you, sir. Great to see you. Thanks, Jim. All right, Mabel, back here for the break.